you know, there's a very scholarly individual over on the Uncle Lou Patreon page. What calls himself, who have they played? Who have they played <laughs> wants to see a Wisconsin preview and prediction. And guess what? I do too. I like watching Wisconsin. At least I have in years past. We'll see if I feel the same way now. But I feel like I've talked a lot about Wisconsin on this channel over the years, considering I've got no ties or relationship to Wisconsin. They've had some really good running backs that I've enjoyed watching over the years. And to be honest, for a while, they kind of reminded me of maybe a slightly less talented version of Georgia for a long time. They were, you know, consistently winning 10 plus games, but could rarely win the conference or get any further than that. That was Georgia for a long time um, under Mark Rick and even early on under, under uh, Kirby. Georgia, of course, has uh, jumped over a few of those hurdles uh, after last season. But I, I, I have enjoyed watching Wisconsin over the years. Now, they've had a couple of really bad years uh, by Wisconsin standards. And that's what I mean. When when you sit down to, to do a Wisconsin prediction, you almost don't need to look anything up and you're just going to say, well, they're going to win 10 games. And you're probably going to be right. Or maybe you'll be off by a game one way or the other. But Wisconsin has been a very consistently good team for a lot of years. Like I said, maybe with the, the slight exception of the last two being down years, uh, especially for what Wisconsin is used to. But good morning, and that is Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, live on LouTube for you. Thanks for watching this Wisconsin preview and prediction video. Of course, I'm doing a whole series of these videos. I've done, uh, what have I done so far? I know I've done Alabama. I've done Miami. Um, if you're interested, just click back a few videos. Order a playlist called 2022 Predictions. It's going to have them all in there. But I'm going to do about 50 or 60 of these over the course of June, July, and even into the first week or two of August. As far as what teams I'm going to do, well, like I said today, sat down at a computer. I went over to my Patreon page. I found our buddy, who have they played, who left a comment that he wanted to see the Wisconsin preview. That's how I'm choosing them. I'm just heading over to the Patreon page and seeing what teams it is you guys and girls over there want to see me do. If you're not on the Uncle Lou Patreon page and you want to check it out, there's a link in the description of this video that'll take you there. The first post you'll see, the most recent post on that Patreon page by me, is a post about these prediction videos. Just leave a comment under that post letting me know what team it is you want to see me do. And uh, I'll be sure and get to it sometime over the next couple of months before the season starts. But let's jump into Wisconsin. Of course, I have my copious notes here. You already know, so if you see me looking down, of course, I do take notes on these videos. This isn't the pacing back and forth videos where I just stream of consciousness off the top of my head and yell into the phone. Uh, I actually do uh, sit down and do a little bit of research and take some notes uh, on these things here. So, of course, Wisconsin Badgers, Big Ten West, right? Considered the lesser of the two divisions, at least right now within the Big Ten. The East has been kind of dominant lately with Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, even Penn State has had some pretty good years. We're going to talk about Wisconsin and how they've done overall in the Big Ten over the last 10 or so years here in just a second. But Paul Christ heading into his, I believe, his eighth year. He's been there since 2015. So he's been there a long time. Here's his win totals year over year, going back to 2015, uh, starting with 2015 and working up till present day. 10 wins, 11 wins, 13 wins, 8 wins, 10 wins. And then listen to these last two years. Four wins. Now, that was the COVID year, so maybe you throw that out. But last year, only nine wins. So besides the COVID year, last year was the first year Paul Christ failed to reach double-digit wins. Uh, they were 9-4, and four and uh, uh, really they were 8-4 and four in the regular season. They did win their bowl game. They lost to most of the good teams they played. Um they lost to Penn State, Notre Dame, uh, Michigan, and Minnesota. Their two best wins were probably Purdue and Iowa, and then they did beat Arizona State, uh, like I mentioned, in the bowl game, the Las Vegas Bowl. They haven't made a Big Ten title game since 2019, and they haven't actually won the Big Ten uh, since all the way back in 2012. Uh, team Talent Index. Now, some people don't put any weight into this at all and that's fine what uh 24 7 puts out a team talent index where they basically average out your last four recruiting classes they take out players you lost through the portal they add for players that you've taken in so it does take the transfer portal um into account uh but they were the 21st most talented team in america last year just according to their roster this surprised me a little um, when I went and looked up Wisconsin's recruiting rankings and their talent levels over the last few years. 
I've always been under the impression that Wisconsin recruits a little bit better than it turns out that they actually do. If you look at their total team talent, now it is heading in the right direction, uh, but four years ago, the 36th most talented team. Three years ago, the 33rd most talented team. Two years ago, the 27th most talented team. And then last year, like I mentioned, the 21st most talented team. Didn't translate to wins on the field, though, going 9-4. and four. The team talent index for this coming season isn't out yet on 24-7. But the point that I'm trying to make with this is that I was surprised that Wisconsin was, cru- was recruiting, honestly, poorly up until about four or five years ago. In fact, three of their last four signing classes are three of their highest signing classes in school history, and none of them in any year are in the top three, even of the Big Ten. Um, You can probably guess the names that are ahead of them um, in in recruiting over in the Big Ten, but of course, Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State out-recruit them almost every single year, and then in any given year, there's two, three, four other teams that have out-recruited them as well. So the talent is heading in the right direction compared to where it was three or four years ago, but it's time to start seeing that translate into some wins on the field, right? They've got to start competing uh, uh, with some of those big boys in the East. Can they do it this year? Well, um, I don't know. Let's try to find out. Like I said, they haven't made the Big 12 title game since 2019 and haven't won the Big 12 in a decade uh, way back in 2012. Let's start with their offense. Now, offense has been the problem for Wisconsin, honestly, as long as almost anybody can remember. Now, I know they've had great offensive lines and great running backs throughout the years. That's almost been negated by how poor their quarterback play has been almost every single year for any year that you can think of. I know Russell Wilson was there, and they had a, a year or two here or there with another guy put up a, a decent numbers. But generally speaking, Wisconsin has really struggled uh, since college football changed six, seven years ago and went to more of a wide-open, spread, RPO type of style. Wisconsin has really struggled to adapt, in my opinion. And I think that is what has capped them at these 10 and 11 win seasons. They run into these teams like Ohio State, who also play great defense and can run the ball, but can also stretch the field. And they have a hard time getting over those hurdles. They've got to find a way to improve that. Now, they've replaced four offensive coaches uh, coming into this year. So I'm not the only one that thinks Wisconsin's problem is on the offensive side of the ball. Clearly, Wisconsin thinks that as well, replacing almost half their offensive coaches from last year. Uh from last year to this year uh running back braylon allen uh, the bright spot and again that shouldn't be surprised and you shouldn't even have to do any research or look anything up to say well wisconsin's best offensive player is probably a running back uh you'd be right he was their best player last year he'll be their best player again this year he's their rb1 if you want to call him that they're going to play two or three different running backs they've got two seniors as well uh that will play but uh braylon allen braylon allen is going to be uh the, the the man uh, in terms of running back at Wisconsin for this coming year. He led America last year in uh, yards after contact per attempt. Typical what you think of when you think of a Wisconsin running back, right? Runs between the tackles, can get to the outside when he needs to, but he's not afraid uh, to run into things. Uh, loves contact. Uh, a couple of seniors, like I mentioned. Offensive line, again, you don't have to know much about Wisconsin to know that they're going to have a pretty good offensive line. And that'll be the case again in 2022. Uh, Jack Nelson is going to move from right guard to left tackle. So that is one area where they're looking to replace something from last year, losing their left tackle. They like what they see from this kid at right guard, Jack Nelson. They've been they've had him at left tackle really going all the way back since before spring. I would expect he gets to start over there. Wide receiver, again, can anybody name me a, a, a Wisconsin wide receiver at any point in the last 10 years? Uh, no, I didn't think so. Unless you're a Wisconsin fan, you can't name a single one. This has been the problem. They, they Quarterback play and no elite playmakers on the outside. And I'm going to talk about some of their offensive numbers last year, and you'll see what I mean by that. Now, they do have this junior, and, and again, with these names, but Chimer or Chimery, I don't know. And his, uh, Dyke is his last name. Let's just call him Dyke. Uh, only 33 catches last year, and he's their most experienced uh, wide receiver on the team. This has got to improve. This is a combination of of wide receiver and quarterback issues. Graham Mertz, not very good. Um, not very good. He's heading into his third year, and this is make or break time for this kid here. It, if he can't get it together this year, third year there, I, I, then he just doesn't have it, right? There's going to be some people who are going to say, well, I don't need to see another year. I know he doesn't have it. And you might be right. The guy's a turnover machine, turned 11 interceptions last year, and he lost four fumbles on top of that. But they really don't have – there's really no plan B. I mean, they have backups like everybody else does, but there's no highly rated five-star that's there that you know everybody's clamoring to see. 
Graham Mertz is going to have to play well if, if Wisconsin wants to get over the 10 win mark, uh, the 10 win mark this year. Listen to this from last year. Uh, they were ninth in the Big Ten passing the ball, 6.9 yards per attempt. And that's in the Big Ten. Never mind the Big 12 or some of these SEC and Pac 12 schools that really sling the ball around. Ninth in the Big 12 is absolutely pathetic. Uh, explosive plays, deep plays, third and long. These are things that Wisconsin has struggled at offensively, like I said, really for as long as I can remember. And in my opinion, and look, I'm a Georgia fan. Georgia has struggled with this too over the years. Going back to, again, uh, six, seven years ago when college football kind of shifted, especially the SEC and some Big Ten schools too, kind of shifted from more of a uh, you know run-heavy, big offensive lines, pound the rock 40 times a game, to more of a wide-open, spread-it-out RPO type of style. Georgia struggled for a while with that, too. Wisconsin is struggling with it now. Um, th this is absolutely pitiful, 6.9 yards per attempt, ninth in the Big Ten. No explosive plays, no elite playmakers on the outside. It's hard to imagine me, Wisconsin, getting to the playoffs or beating an Ohio State or anything like that in the Big Ten until they get it figured out offensively. I was high on Wisconsin this offseason. I thought there's no way they're going to be as bad as they were last year. After sitting down and going through some of these notes today and looking at this offense, in my opinion, there's not a lot to be excited about offensively for Wisconsin that you haven't been excited about every other year, which is a pretty good offensive line and an NFL running back. I'm not a believer in Graham Mertz. You've got no real option behind him, and where's the playmaking wide receiver? Hard to be overly excited about Wisconsin offensively heading into 2022. Now, defense was the bright spot last year. Everybody talks about Georgia's defense last year, and for good reason, for good reason, right? Right. But what if I asked you what defense in America, what, what was the number one defense in America last year in total yardage Give it up? Not Georgia, Wisconsin. Uh, what was the number one defense last year against the run? Not Georgia, Wisconsin. Wisconsin had a really, really good defense. And if it wouldn't have been for that defense, they wouldn't even have won the nine games that they won. They would have struggled to make a bowl game uh, had it not been for this defense uh, last year. They definitely led the team. Defensive coordinator Jim Leonard, in my opinion, one of the best defensive coordinators in all of college football um, definitely one of the best within the Big Ten. Wisconsin fields a stingy, really good defense almost every single year. That's the good news. Bad news, you lost eight starters off of that defense that I just talked about from last year. And if you go back to what we talked about at the beginning with recruiting, Wisconsin's not in a Georgia situation. Um, you know, uh, Wisconsin doesn't have a bunch of uh, five stars sitting on the bench waiting their turn like Georgia does. Uh, this is going to be a step back defensively, in my opinion, um, for Wisconsin this year. So, you know how much better can the offense get, and how much you know, how much is the defense going to regress? Hard to be overly optimistic, but let's take a look at some of what you got uh, here on uh, on uh, defense linebackers. <laughs> you lose a, uh, a a first team uh, first team All Big Ten linebacker and a second team All American linebacker gone. Uh, now you do get Nick Herbie back. Is that his name? Herb Herbig again. Uh, who, why would someone? Why, how is this a name? Her big. That's one name. Last name. Nick. Her big. I guess she is big. I don't know. But uh, she had nine sacks last year, so that's pretty good. He's back. He might be your best player defensively this year. Could have a breakout year. Your safety too is really good. A, a, another guy that's looking for a breakout year. Defensive line. Very deep. I do like the defensive line. Like Georgia, they rotate a bunch of players in and out. And a lot of teams do this now, but Wisconsin's got the talent to do it at a high level, even when no second guys, uh, even when no second guys come into the game. DBs, well, you lost almost your entire secondary last year. So what did you do? Well, you went through the uh, transfer portal. We'll see how this works out. But you added three transfer cornerbacks, all of which have a lot of starting college experience. Uh, because you lost a three-year starter and you lost a four-year starter in your secondary last year and your safety, Hunter Wohler, like I mentioned, uh, probably your best secondary player. Him and your uh, the, uh, that linebacker, Nick Herbig, I think are your two best players um, defensively. So there it is. That's kind of what I think about Wisconsin, where they've been, where they're at, where they may be headed this year, offensively and defensively. Again, I've been high on Wisconsin this offseason. After doing this research, I have pumped the brakes on them um, a little bit. I, I feel like it's only fair to do, but you take a look at the schedule here and you guys can tell me in the comment section down below how you think they're going to fare. I'm going to go through it game by game and again, give you a win or a loss here uh, for every single game. And we'll see what type of a record we come up with 
at the end. But you start off, of course, with uh, a non-con game, Illinois State. Uh, that's going to be a win. Uh, again, I don't care what you think about Wisconsin offensively, and even though they lost eight starters on defense, this should be a relatively easily easy win in a warm-up game for Wisconsin. Week two, not a warm-up game. Washington State is capable of beating this, uh, of beating you. In fact, if this game was being played at Washington State, I may actually pick Washington State to win. Washington State is a team that not a lot of people are talking about, and I don't expect them to win 10 or 11 games or win the Pac-12 or anything like that, but they're better than what you just – Whatever your idea is of, of Washington State in your mind, they're going to be a little bit better than that uh, this year, in my opinion. I don't think they'll beat you at Camp Randall. You're lucky in that you do have one of the uh, uh, better home field advantages, not just in the Big Ten, but in all of college football. I think you start out 2-0, and but again, don't I, that Washington State game, to me, is a tricky one for Wisconsin. Week three, another non-con game, New Mexico State. Again, a game that was, uh, Wisconsin's absolutely got to win. I think you need to go undefeated in your non-con schedule. I think you need to start 3-0 and in these games here, or it's going to be a brutal season because if you can't beat Washington State, then there's a lot of conference losses coming up on this schedule. But I do have you starting 3-0. and uh, Again, your three non-con games to start the season out. Wisconsin, like every Big Ten team, plays nine conference games. So only room for three non-cons. I do have you here at 3-0, and but now you're starting your conference schedule, and it's on the road at Ohio State. And I'm not even going to make well, you – I just can't see you winning this game. I don't think there's anything Wisconsin can come up with offensively in the first month of the season to make up the gap that exists between them and Ohio State. I know Wisconsin's defense is good, and I know last year Ohio State's defense struggled. Ohio State's defense is going to be much improved this year, and Ohio State's got – one of the best quarterbacks in America, one of the best running backs in America, and one of the best wide receivers in America. they got three, in my opinion, three Heisman candidates uh, at, at all three of the skill positions on um, on offense. they got a, a Heisman candidate QB and C.J. Stroud, Travion Henderson running the ball, and just take your pick from those wide receivers. They have the deepest, most talented, and best wide receiver room in all of America, and I don't think anyone else is even close in terms of a second place when it comes to Ohio State's wide receiver room. I'm sorry, you're not winning that game on the road um, at the horseshoe. I think Ohio State beats you handily. Uh, Illinois. Illinois is another team that, in my opinion, is better than what you think they are in your head when you just see the word Illinois. That being said, again, this one's at home, and this is another one here that Wisconsin has absolutely got to win. If Wisconsin loses to Illinois and loses one of these first three non-con games, they're not making a bowl game because this schedule is about to get uh, brutal here as we move into it. But I do have you winning at home against Illinois. But like that Washington State game, I would not be shocked uh, if for some reason uh, Illinois came out of that one with a win. Up next, on the road at Northwestern. Again, this is not a gimme game for Wisconsin. That being said, I do think Wisconsin wins this. I like Northwestern. I mean, is there anybody that just doesn't like Northwestern? Why would anybody not like Northwestern? I like Pat Fitzgerald. Northwestern's stadium and facilities are absolutely amazing. If you've never looked at them, look at them, Google them, the Google Earth, or just a Google image search for Northwestern's um, uh, facilities there on campus, but they sit right on the water. They're absolutely amazing. But anyway, Northwestern's one of those teams that, yeah, you know, every three or four years, if things go exactly right for them and they have a senior heavy roster with a lot of key you know a lot of a, a lot of veteran starters and key uh, positions they can get one of these 10 or 11 win seasons and compete with somebody like a Wisconsin unfortunately for Northwestern I don't think that's going to be this season I think you go on the road and get the win there at Northwestern but man back to back road games you turn around there and go to Michigan State and I think you lose this one now Michigan State's a team that I do not think is going to repeat the success that they had last year so I'll just be up front about that now I don't think that's going to happen <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, my nose is running. These allergies are killing me. I apologize for that. Uh, these allergies down here, or look, when it's when it's 115 degrees outside, and you, and the allergies, just forget it. Just, just hide in your refrigerator down here. It's just absolutely insane. Uh, but I do think uh, Michigan State beats you this year. They're going to take a step back. They lose Kenneth Walker, and again, they're not a team that recruits at a level to be able to replace somebody like that. In my opinion, now they got Kenneth Walker from the transfer portal. So who knows what diamonds in the rough may be waiting out there for them to find this year, offensively or defensively for that matter. 
Um, I, I, I just I can't. That back-to-back road games is tough. It's always difficult to have to go on the road two weeks in a row. And in my opinion, both of these teams could possibly beat Wisconsin. I can't see Wisconsin losing to both of them, though. So I gave you the win on the road at Wisconsin. I got you losing now uh, on the road to the fighting Mel Tuckers, uh, the Spartans of Michigan State. And again, now you come back home, you have to play Purdue. Purdue is a team. Some people think Purdue can win the division. Some people uh, think Purdue is a 10-plus win team. I will admit that Purdue was better last year than I thought they would be, and their quarterback is an absolute beast if he can stay healthy and the offensive line can protect him. He's going to put up a bunch of numbers. I think Purdue beats you. I, I just Look, after I sat down and went over this stuff offensively and I'm like, Graham Mertz again? Really? They don't have anything else they can put in there? Uh, still no wide receiver. I mean, your, your best returning wide receiver had 30 catches last year. I, I mean, it just doesn't appear to be heading. I, I know you got a new offensive coordinator, and that's amazing. And this year, Graham Hurts is going to be under center more instead of in a shotgun. That's great. The guy's been there three years. You change offensive styles like or coordinators and coaches like most people change socks and underwear. I just I don't see Graham Mertz somehow, uh, you know, having some massive awakening this year and just autumn. You know, and now he's a good court. I just don't see it. I'm sorry. I. I wanted to be high on Wisconsin, and it just didn't end up that way. I mean, that's how it goes sometimes. You have a preconceived notion about a team, right? You think they're this or that, and you, th- you have you s- certain things you think about. It. You sit down for 30 minutes or an hour. You do a little bit of research. You take some notes, and you, you, you sometimes you got to go, you know what? I was wrong. And in this case, I was wrong. I just don't think Wisconsin is going to be very good this year. You're going to get beat by Purdue. Anytime you get beat by Purdue, you're not very good. Period. Sorry, uh, you know, to whatever Purdue fans are out there, but it's just reality. You got a bye week, which is great because you're going to be licking your wounds after those two losses there. <laughs> then you got to come back home and play Maryland. Look, Maryland is going to beat somebody this year they're not supposed to beat. Who are they not supposed to beat? They're not supposed to beat Wisconsin. That's for sure. Not supposed to beat Ohio State, Penn State, uh, Michigan, Michigan State, Iowa. I don't know. They're going to beat somebody, though. Pineapple Jr., I think, to his younger brother. I think he's going to have a good year this year for Maryland. I'm giving you a win here because it's at home. But look, again, just like with Washington State or, hell, even Illinois or Northwestern, I won't be surprised if Wisconsin loses this game. There are a lot of toss-up games on this schedule for Wisconsin, and it's all because of Wisconsin's offense. I just don't have any trust or faith in this offense. Two years in a row, two years in a row, Wisconsin has averaged less than 26 points a game in today's college football. That's unacceptable. And I don't see what has changed here. Same quarterback, same wide receiver, same running back. A new offensive coordinator. Great. I, he's still got the same puzzle pieces. I just don't know. I, I don't see it. Uh, Maryland could 100% uh, beat you, but I've got you winning there. So, you know, I, I guess just be happy with that. I don't really know what else to tell you. Uh, but guess what? Then you got to come home and play. Uh, or on the road. Again, back-to-back road games again. Back-to-back road games again. You could lose both of these. I think you're going to get beat at Iowa, and I'm just going to tell you now, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. I think you're going to lose on the road at Nebraska. No, Nebraska, the best three and nine team in the history of college football last year. Yeah, well, uh, addition by subtraction for them. Unlike Wisconsin, Nebraska sent their doo-doo quarterback packing. Yeah, they told they told Adrian Martinez to hit the first thing smoking out of Lincoln. He's gone. He's not there anymore. You guys are coddling Graham Mertz like suddenly the light bulb's going to go off. I don't understand. You come back home, you play Minnesota, I'm going to give you a win there. But that's 7-5. and five. That's 7-5. and five. You could go 8-5 and five with a bowl win depending on the matchup. This doesn't make me happy to do that, and maybe that's why I'm getting so irritated and agitated here at the end of this video. I, I All offseason, I've been telling people don't sleep on Wisconsin. I, I think I, I might have even mentioned in the past, oh, Wisconsin might win the Big Ten West. Shit. Wisconsin ain't winning the Big Ten West. No. They're not winning the Big Ten West. All, you, you're, all you're winning is the ugliest offense again. Facts.